Number 80. Steve Austin vs. Ricky Steamboat, United States Championship Bash at the Beach, 1994. Before Steve Austin was a Texas rattlesnake and the most successful star of all time, he was a great mat technician that could wrestle with the best, even the likes of Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Austin already knew his game plan for the match as he had words for Dragon Slayer in white letters on the black trunks. There was nothing plain about this match and Austin gave the veteran Steamboat everything he had. No matter what stunning Steve did, the Dragon was always a step ahead. In the end, the future Stone Cold would temporarily extinguish the Dragon as he re retained the US title by having his foot on the ropes for the win. 79. Seth Rollins vs. John Cena, title vs. title match, SummerSlam 2015. Seth Rollins was on a roll as WWE Champion after winning the title at WrestleMania 31. He was the golden boy for the authority, delivering great match after great match even though he had Kane and the Midget Squad help him. On the other hand, John Cena was bringing prestige back to the United States Championship after he defeated Rusev as a title at the same WrestleMania. It was only a matter of time before they would collide. John was on the quest to win his 16th world title as he unveiled a shirt that said 15 times on the back. However, there was an added twist to this match. John Stewart, John got in Seth's face after leading into this match, so he was bound to play in the part. At SummerSlam in the match, Gina gave Rollins the attitude adjustment for a near fall. Seth gave John an attitude adjustment of his own for a near fall when Rollins went for the pedigree. Cena reversed it into a figure four leg lock. Rollins countered, but Cena reached ape ropes to break the hold. As Cena went for a second AA, Rollins collided with a referee. Jon Stewart ran into the ring with a chair, looking to assist Cena. Instead, Stewart nails him with the chair for Rollins to finish the match with the pedigree to become WWE Champion and US Champion. Rollins became the first wrestler in history to unify WWE and U.S. titles. Number 78, Randy Orton vs. Cactus Jack. No DQ match for the WWE Intercontinental Championship Backlash 2004. As an international continental champion, Randy Orton was on fire as a legend killer. Orton was clearly building his resume of legend to kill. However, the toughest opponent up to the point would become Cactus Jack. After Orton disrespected Foley by spitting in his face, kicking him down the stairs and pinning him at WMXX, it was time for a mix most dangerous person to be revealed. It was none other than Cactus Jack. Just like Triple H before him, Orton had to show his aggressive side against the hardcore legend. It was definitely a throwback to Cactus Jack's heyday, as it was one of the finest matches not only for Foley, but for Orton as well. It worked out well for both sides. Randy was no longer just seen as a pretty boy, but someone that can get hardcore with the very best. Meanwhile, this match was the perfect way for McFoley to redeem himself. It was filled with thumbtacks, barbed wire, and baseball bats wrapped with barbed wire, the perfect ingredients for a Cactus Jack match. Orton survived as he put away the hardcore genius with an RKO to retain the IC title. Ric Flair vs. Dusty Rhodes, NWA Championship, The Great American Bash, 1986. This match was a perfect exclamation point on the historic rivalry between Ric Flair and Dusty Rhodes. After having a matches that previously ended in controversial fashion, it was time for the Nature Boy and the American Dream to settle their differences once and for all inside the classic steel cage match. This was the back when the cage match actually meant something for Dusty it meant everything. Rick had no reinforcements like the horsemen to lean on as the stars were aligned for him and Dusty to clash. Dusty fought with every ounce of fire and passion as did Flair. They fought as if they were fighting their last match. From their battle on the top of the cage and throughout the match, fans were glued in blue collar versus high class. In the end, working man would win for the people. 76. Edge vs. Mick Foley, Hardcore Match, WrestleMania 22. By this point, Edge was the top heel in wrestling. 
However, Mick Foley cost him the WWE title on an episode of Raw, costing him the opportunity to have a match with John Cena for a company's top prize at WrestleMania. Edge was furious as he went to war with the hardcore great. Foley was being the teddy bear back to being a grizzly bear. This match was significant for both legends. Edge was finding a niche as the main eventer and wanted to prove to everyone else he had what it took to carry the company. Meanwhile, Foley had never had a defining WrestleMania moment in his entire career since retiring full-time in 2000. Edge had always been a TLC specialist, but he had not yet established himself as a single star at Mania. They took each other beyond their limits. The punctuation for this match was when Edge speared Mick through a burning table for a victory. A match with Foley was always proving ground for toughness and Edge proved himself very well. Number 75 Daniel Bryan vs Triple H WrestleMania 30 This will clearly go down as one of the greatest opening matches in WrestleMania history. Daniel Bryan was at the height of the feud with the Authority. Over and over, Bryan was bullied and had opportunities taken from him left and right, from losing the WWE title to Randy Orton at SummerSlam to having this title stripped from him, to not even being able to enter Royal Rumble. Daniel could not even catch a break at all. Finally, fans had enough and hijacked Raw to force Vince and the authorities to hand to include Daniel Bryan in WrestleMania. However, he had to get through a roadblock named Triple H in the first match. It was a great storytelling as Brian was the underdog and had fought resiliently to take down the leader of the authority in order to take the next step towards his dream. Even with his injuries, Brian fought like a warrior to take down the cerebral assassin. Number 74, The Shield vs. The Wyatt Family, Elimination Chamber 2014 The Hounds of Justice vs. The Manson Family of Wrestling, The Shield vs. The Wyatt Family this feud had the potential to be the modern day version of the Von Erichs vs. Freebirds. They were the perfect dance partners for each other. Their match at the 2014 Elimination Chamber was match worthy of WrestleMania. Believe in the shield or follow the buzzards. This match had the ingredients for chaos. In the weeks leading up to the PPV, the Wyatts cost the shield members the opportunity to compete for the WWE World Heavyweight title inside of the chamber. Bray. Wyatt boldly told the Hound of Justice, I welcome this war. First, the Wyatts eliminated Dean Ambrose before putting Seth Rollins through the announce table. Bray would close things for him and his family as he pinned Roman Reigns for the win. Number 73, Ric Flair vs. The Mr. Perfect Loser Leaves Town Match Raw on January 25, 1993. This was the first truly great match in the history of Monday Night Raw. Ric Flair and Mr. Perfect were closing the chapter on the feud at the dawn of 1993. Being teased up when Heenan called Perfect washed up, Kurt proved otherwise. This match was the perfect backstory as Rick is on his way out of WWE and on his way back to WCW. Flair could have mailed it in, but he put in a strong performance. Kurt was a natural heel, but this match was where he was at his best as a babyface. Perfect will prevail as Nature Boy was out of the door and returned back south to WCW. Number 72, The Rock vs. Mankind. I quit match for WWF Championship Royal Rumble 1999. This match was the pinnacle of their feud. It all started when Vince betrayed Mankind to help The Rock become the WWF Champion. Rocky was the centerpiece of the corporation as he personified the corporate champion. However, Mankind was the opposite of corporate as the underdog and everyone loved. During this time, they exchanged the title back and forth. On the first Raw of 1999, Mankind defeated The Rock in the WWF title to take Stone Cold Steve Austin. However, The Rock challenged Mankind to an I Quit match for the title of the Royal Rumble. This match was absolutely savage. Mankind withstood immense punishment from The Rock's chair shots. This match is another reminder of why chairs to the head are no longer allowed. Rocky scrambled Mankind's brains with the chair. The Rock even laid the chair on Mankind's face for the people's elbow. Ultimately, Mankind would scream, I quit, as The Rock would reign the WWF Championship. 71. Bret Hart vs. 123Kid WWF Championship Match, Raw 1994 By 1994, Bret Hart was on top of WrestleMania Mountaintop as the WWF Champion. He was the flagship star of the company and carried it well. 
On the other hand, you had the rising young star, the 1-2-3 kid who had making his name for himself with victories over veterans like Razor Ramon, Ted DiBiase, and others. The kid proved that he had what it takes to hang with the best of the best. He was even the king of the ring tournament that year. As a result, he received the WWF title shot against Bret Hart on Raw. This match was definitely one of the special gems of Raw that could arguably be the better of the PVV match. The 1 3 kid had the speed and determination to go toe to toe with excellence and execution. Brett's technique prowess versus the kid's speed and athleticism. It was a great combination that told an excellent story. In the end, Brett veteran instincts won out as he caught the 1 3 kid in the sharpshooter for the win. This match was another classic in Brett's enormous catalog of matches. Meanwhile, this is the best match Sean Waltman overall career from 1-2-3 Kid to SYXX to X-Pac. Number 70. Hulk Hogan and Mr. T vs. Roddy Piper and Paul Orendolph, WrestleMania 1. This was the granddaddy of the main event because it was the match that the first WrestleMania was built around. The main event itself was the definition of rock and wrestling. Hogan and Mr. T were the original mega power team as they battled Roddy Piper and Paul Orendolph. It was a spectacle that Vincent K. McMahon heavily invested in, and it clearly paid off with Hogan and Mr. T. WrestleMania 1 had a significant cultural impact because of the strength of the main event. 